Hello and welcome shortwave listeners. Hey, I know it's been quite a while since I've posted on this channel, but some of my time has freed up recently. So in this video, I'm going to start a new series on what you can expect in certain shortwave bands or frequencies. You know, quite often newcomers to the hobby pick up a shortwave only to be disappointed because they can't hear anything or don't know much about the particular band that they're trying to listen to. You know, the wide variety of factors that affect listening from propagation, antennas, receiver sensitivity, noise, geolocation, etc., can be very, very frustrating at times. But given all that, sometimes just having a simple guide can help understand when a particular band might have some interesting signals to listen to and if that range of frequencies is really worth the effort to scan. So today I'm going to talk about the 170 meter band or the frequency range of about 1705 to 1800 kilohertz, basically just below the 160 meter amateur radio band. It's a very unusual band and many of you probably think there's nothing worth listening to or scanning for. And yeah, depending on where you live, that will most likely be true and quite a challenge. But I decided to start this series in the low bands first. And we'll be moving up blocks of frequencies in future videos, so stay tuned for that. All right, in many ways, I find this band highly intriguing. It's so unusual. In the United States, the medium wave or broadcast AM band ends at 1705 kilohertz, with 1710 and above being reserved for either traffic information on 1710 or some special utility stations. But before I continue, there's one side note I should point out. Many portable shortwave receivers today do not have this band available, such as the Texan PL380, which has a gap between 1710 and 2300 kilohertz. So you're going to have to check your own shortwave to see what frequency range is available. But at least most radios in the United States do cover 1710, so that's a possible place to start. All right, enough talking. Let's start with an example that many listeners in the United States could try. Out on the East Coast, there's a 24-hour traffic information station in New Jersey on 1710 kilohertz that many of you could receive. In fact, this station has been heard in Europe. Let's take a listen. QFG 689 owned and operated by Hudson County, New Jersey. We are currently experiencing technical difficulties and continue to work on correcting the issue. Please check back with 1710 AM soon. Thank you for your patience. This is radio station WQFG 689, owned and operated by Hudson County, New Jersey. Okay, well, that might have covered listeners on the East Coast of the United States and possibly in Europe. But if you happen to live on the West Coast, there is another station with the call sign KHMB, which is a community station located in Half Moon Bay, California, which is also broadcasting on 1710 kilohertz. So if you just happen to have a portable AM radio or you're in on the West Coast in your car and you're using your car radio um, and you tune 1710 in the evening, you may be able to pick up KHMB. Let's take a listen. This is Cindy Middleweddy with Bay World Travel. Am I the only one who thinks 2023 is racing by? Don't wait another minute to make travel plans or you might be left behind. Whether you're dreaming of a leisurely sail down the Nile or the mighty Mississippi, or cruising the Great Lakes, small trip cruising is back in a big way. And from Vatican City to Istanbul to Jerusalem, enjoy an intimate and thought-provoking look at some of the world's most revered destinations where art, it's been a bit of a mystery as to why medium wave radios in the United States included 1710. The AM or medium wave allocated spectrum for broadcast radio stations only includes 1700, but not 1710 kilohertz. It was thought 1710 would be used for roadside travel services. However, a number of small unlicensed low power stations are operating around the US as local or sometimes pirate radio you know, typically providing some music formats or some general interest content like Half Moon Bay. These are sometimes known as Part 15 stations, which is a section in the FCC rules that, that allow unlicensed broadcasts, but have to be operated with heavy restrictions on power and antennas. Oddly, Part 15's rules are slightly different for 1710 kilohertz than for the normal AM or medium wave band range, which is really kind of confusing and could lead to large fines for low power broadcasters if they're not careful. 
Given all that, you might be in range of some other examples in the U.S., such as Troubadour 1710 in Shirley, Massachusetts, or KNKL in Sturgis, South Dakota. I would guess that there are probably others. Okay, we've heard some of the U.S. domestic stations on 1710 kilohertz. Um, let's move on to other stations around the world. One of the things that the 170 meter band is designated for is maritime radio um, safety information stations. A lot of them we find in the Atlantic Ocean, North Atlantic, especially around Iceland and in Norway and Sweden. So let's take a listen right now to a couple of examples, one on 1710 kilohertz and another one on 1728 kilohertz. I believe both are Norwegian uh, navigational stations. One's going to be in Norwegian on 1728, the other in English. I think they're called Telenor. Uh, if anyone in the comments can correct me on that, but I believe these are the stations. Let's take a listen to those. Well, besides some of these radio navigational aids in that 170 meter band range, there are other mysterious signals that I have not been able to identify. <clears throat> some of these may be coded messages, some may just be pirates running on the frequency, or it could just be maritime shippers that are using the frequency for whatever purpose. First, you're going to hear a mysterious signal that's in Morse code. You'll see the de decoding of that signal. Uh, I believe it's on 1724 kilohertz or 1725. I don't know what the message is. So let's take a listen to that first. Clearly, that is some type of encoded message. I don't know where that actually originated from. I should point out, and uh, didn't mention this earlier in the video, that many of these captures are coming from web uh, SDR receivers across the world. And this particular one was captured in Europe. This next capture, though not necessarily mysterious, is uh, a Stanag transmission, that is standard agreement transmission, uh, that is prevalent across many of the shortwave bands. In this case, it's in the 170 meter band. Um, this was captured in the North Atlantic, and I'm sure you've heard this signal before. And if you're interested in Stanag, S-T-A-N-A-G, take a look online. There's plenty of videos that explain what the signal is and uh, what it means. Clearly, that is not necessarily mysterious. Stanag is used to send encoded messages between NATO countries, and not necessarily always encoded. Some are, some are open text, um, but it's a common format you'll see across many of the HF bands. So my last capture um, that I picked up on an SDR in Sweden, um, oddly, seems to be a conversation in Russian 
on 1751.5 kilohertz. You can see right next to um, the Stanag symbol, uh, signal earlier on 1768.5 kilohertz. Uh, I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is ship-to-ship -ship communication with Russians. I don't know if this might be a Russian pirate station or just uh, someone having a conversation on that band. But take a listen and hopefully someone who knows Russian maybe can, can put in the comments what they're talking about. Um, it's kind of interesting and it's, it is mysterious. So take a listen. I have no idea what that conversation is about, but definitely mysterious. You know, I have scanned many of the web SDRs across the world um, to, to look at this frequency range to see if there are any other mysterious signals or stations. I have not been able to find anything. One thing you note, um, in the United States, the frequency range of 1705 to 1800 kilohertz is designated for Alaska fixed and private land mobile or sometimes called fixed mobile radio location. So I'm assuming that has something to do with navigational aids again in Alaska. I have scanned SDRs in Alaska. I have not heard any signals in that range. So if anybody from Alaska knows about that, it would be very interesting to hear why that was allocated um, for Alaska fixed and what that actually means. All right, well, that's it for this video. I hope you found it informative. I'm sure I've missed many other signals in that frequency range. And any call outs, please feel free to add that to the comments um, and, and or corrections if you feel like um, I said something mistakenly. But um, I can want to continue to make these videos in the future and hope you enjoyed it. Take care and keep listening to Shortwave.